Okay. So today is Python and machine learning with scikit learn. Today we will just deal with some real data set. So real life data set. So we'll see how to explore a real data set with Panda data frame or Panda package. And we'll also learn some of the machine learning techniques with scikit learn. So today's class, I have three files. So SDNT time, IPython notebook. Uh, SDNT time, SQLarm, IPython notebook, this one. We'll use Titanic dataset and uh, SDLE Pandas, IPython notebook. So all of these in located in GitHub, uh, sorry, Bitbucket, and also in the Python class, Google directory. So if you can download it and start IPython, so we can begin. So mm -hmm. first for like, what is Panda does or what does it do? So in like if you want to read a CSV in R, it just like straight command read CSV and it does everything. But Python it's not that straightforward. And if you look into Python data frame structure, it's not that much handy. But R is really like straightforward and you can use those things. So data panda data frame like it helps us to analyze those things. And like it's really straightforward and more much more like easy. <coughs> so today we will use panda and numpy and so these are the import command. So this will import panda and it's like writing a full panda is not useful. So I am using acronym as PD. It's like uh, PD is like everyone knows in Python PD is transfer. <laughs> Panda and NumPy stand uh, NP and the accurately inline it helps us to like plot within the IPython notebook and so so if we have everything we just run this one so and you have to change this command like where mm -hmm. your Titanic data set is located. So if you have this thing, just run this thing and you'll have it. So data.head, what does it do? It just does like our, our data. And IPython uses the forward slash for directory. Mm -hmm. So just like handy Linux. Mm -hmm. So data head, it gives you like a first five column of the data, five rows of the data and shows all the data, like what's the thing. And you can change it like you, you, you just say so like I don't need to see all the five, so I can see only three. So you just change three, and then you can see only three. And similarly, data frame tape is like show the last five rows of the data. So here this is like a five um, Titanic data set. So in the first column is like passenger ID, then Second column is survived. So zero means like this passenger didn't survive, one means like this passenger did survive. And then this is passenger class, name of the passenger, sex of the passenger, and the age. Is, this is like if the passenger has any sibling, siblings in the Titanic, and where it is purchased, ticket number, fare, cabin location, and where it's import. So S stands for Southampton, C, I forgot. So, but this is like a very popular data set. You can just Google it and you can find out everything. So, next, if you want to see the row number or the index, just type data.index. It will give you the, all the row numbers of the index. So, if you want to see the summary of the data, so now we have like all data is a mixture of like okay, character values and the uh, numeric values. So you want to see the summary statistics of the data. So that command is like data dot describe. So if you just do a data dot describe, it will give you the statistics. So you can see like passenger ID there's like eight hundred and ninety one passenger ID, and in the survey there's like eight hundred and ninety one survey data not 891 survey and p class it has also 891 but in the h section there is like 7 
seven and fourteen. So in each section there is like number of data is missing. You can see the rest of them is also like two. So you can see like there's a number of missing. And data dot describe, so in the summary statistic it only shows the numeric value. So it is not showing anything about the like what is the sex distribution or the fair, uh, caging or number. So it only shows you the summary of the numeric values. Do you have that data set in your Git repository? Uh, I think. It's also, also in the Google, in Google Drive. Drive. So you take any Yeah, for the first cell on the notebook, it has the full file from there. Uh, yeah, so that's for my laptop, so we have to change it. So so if the data is in your like Yeah, for the uh, repository for tea time we could just delete the first part of that and just So now we find out, okay, there is like missing values here in the age. So we want to see like, what is the missing value statistics for different problem. So we just do like data is now. So data is now gives you like a true or false value. So true means like if there is a value, false means like there is any values. And we want to sum, mm, sum of these things for like all different columns. So in passenger ID, there is like no any values. So in the passenger ID, there is no n values. In H column, there's a 177 values missing. And in the Kevin column, there's like 687 values are missing. And in Embark column, there's like two n values. So this gives you like a summary statistics, like what, how you have to handle those things. So now like, okay, we do a like data exploration. So we have to see like, uh, as distribution of the survival and so just do a like data survived value so just it does like mm, it goes to the data and the survived column and like count the how many survived values is there so if we look into survived column here it has zero and one zero for like it didn't survive one is for survive and like this common data survive dot value counts, it counts like how many zeros are there, how many ones is there. And like and then it do a plot and plot will be like bar plot and this is the thing and plot title would be distribution of survival one is survive. Is the function data dot survive dot value counts part of pandas? Yeah. Or just this is part of pandas. So, so you don't have to do P D first? No, like data is already panda data frame, so it identifies like a so part of panda. So just enter it and it just gives you the. So in panda, you can like access the particular column using dot or some other way. I'll just show you. So, so this is one bar plot. You can do a scatter plot or something like that. Same thing. So plot is scatter data survive versus data age. So just like this survival by age. Mm -hmm. So you can also do like how uh, how many like the class distribution of how many survived. So just this. So see the bar plot here. It is different from the bar plot here. So this is a bar plot vertical and this one is a horizontal. horizontal. And the only thing you have to change is here like kind or type. So if you do change, remove the H, it will be horizontal. If you put a H, it will So this is like simple <laughs> graphics mm -hmm. things. So next we look into some of the panda functions like 
how to subset a column or something. So let's subset the data frame. Like, okay, we want to see, we want to subset from H to N. So just to do that, so data index, so first is row, we want all the rows and column from H to N. H to end. So just do that and it will just de-describe it will show us like just column again. What are the take column we have? So we just okay H siblings for children fair. So all the just mm -hmm. all we so all mm -hmm. so if you want just to the column H, so we can change it to just a Just the edge column, so we just type. Mm -hmm. So you can access a column like different ways. So with parentheses, then quotation mark, then the column name, or you can use just like simple as it is. So, so if it is like this, H to part uh, end. So if you don't want like all those things, you want like okay, some particular, so from H to like purchase. So how can you do that? So for that one, here we go back. So this will give us the column between H and purchase. So H So now we want to add another column to this. So suppose like we want to add another column like fair. And so how can we do that? So we will introduce a new column name so called fair and increase. So you can see fair one is the new column. Name. So sometimes like we need to transpose the data matrix. So transpose is very easy, just a comment like capital T. So now we do. So previously data looks like this, now it looks like this. Because it transports the column row. So what are the columns name there just sort of like it goes to the row name. And the column number, is, uh, row number name becomes the like, now the column names. Mm -hmm. So, in the subsetting columns, like we saw, like it subsets between range, like from H to end, and or H to purchase. So we just like suppose we want to just like subset. Okay, we want to just passenger ID and the ticket. We don't want anything in between. So how can we do that? So is that where we use LOC or the location function? <coughs> so this will do. So okay, so we just want A and fair. We don't want anything else. So just do this one. Control A and fair, nothing else. Just two columns. Mm -hmm. So if you want to drop or like delete any columns, so just use drop function. So like this one. So first you have to give the data frame name, then the drop function, then the column name, and the axis. So in the axis in the Python, zero means like row, one means column. Yeah. So this means like you want to drop the number one. Number one that means column. So so this is like age and fair. So we want to drop the So previously we showed like this data set suffers from a lot of <coughs> NA values. So how to drop the NA? It's like a very easy functions, drop NA. So if you just 
do a drop in it, it will drop everything. So all the rows consist uh, in a values. So if we just do that one, we can see like previously there were like 891 data values. So if you just drop those things, so data set becomes like 183 rows. <laughs> so we have to do something. So you can do also some other stuff. So like if you, you want to don't you don't want to delete those in a rows. Yeah. D does pandas like data frames in R, where we always put predictors and responses as columns and observations as rows, does it use the same perspective? Yeah. Okay. So, you don't want to lose all this data, so you can do something like, okay, fill those NLL with something. So, sometimes like we use as like minus one. So, any of this value cannot be negative. So, if you put something in minus, so we know okay, something minus is. So you can use data field dot n a. That means like all those n a values we fill with minus one. You can put anything else also. So just use that one. Then you can see now everything is like eight ninety one. You can age column just say eight ninety one. So there is also some other useful things like margin data frame. And Panda has like a very good or very really good functions. So let's define some of the data frame here. So like df panda data frame. So first column name is E and it has like value A and B. Second column name is like L value or left value one and two. Then I define a second data frame. So if you want to introduce a data frame, it's like PD data frame. It also has a, like a column frame, column name called E. A and B and the right value is 4 and 5. So just example like how our data frame looks like. Just two rows and two columns, very simple data frame. So we want to merge these two data frames. So simple thing, we want to introduce a third data frame, DF3, which will merge DF1 and 2. So just we we'll use pd.march, DF1 and 2, and on key. So how it will merge? It will like it will seek the commonality between the keys. So in DF1 and 2 we have the common keys. So it will use common key A and B and just add another column. Okay. So a very simple thing. And if you don't want to like this, merge like this, so just use DF append. So it will do something like this. How to merge? data frames with different column names. So you want to merge like for example one column P and another column P. So this is data frame one, data frame two, data frame three. If you compare, this is just like this. One after another. Mm -hmm. um, if you give it XYZ key, you do like this. So if you give a like access one, it will like put everything.
to some more exploratory things. So if you want to see the histogram of the data frame, just type data hist. It will plot all the histogram here. Mm -hmm. You can see here like age, fair, purchase, all those different things. And if you want different types of histograms, so just so you just want to see like a scatter matrix and with the distribution like this, so just change the thing, scatter matrix, and diagonal will be KDE, so density plot in the diagonal, so you can just do this. And if you just want to do a scatter matrix, just write a scatter matrix, data frame name, and output the size. You can do some more exploration in the data set. So like, you want to see like, okay, I want to look into the distribution of the survived people and the class one. So just this one plot data.h. So it will select h column of the data, then it will subset survived people to one and class equal to one. So let's see this one. So this is the distribu age distribution of the survived people from class one. So we can add another thing. So we want to see, okay, what is the distribution looks like for class two. Twenty-year-olds have children, have babies. So, again, like if you want to do a bar plot of this thing, same thing, just doing a bar plot. Some people prefer bar plot, some people prefer like distribution. So, which one do you want to see? This is like data exploration phase also. So, just uh, like a gaming chart. So if you want to can see also like in the suburb population how many is female or how many is male. So just doing another thing. So like here we used another variable called S. So in the S we use data survive equal to one. So it S stores all the index where the people survive. So then we here in the plot function we use we like find the value bounds of the sex column and like we use S here. So S means like go all those index where survive equal to one. So this is this way like you can save a lot of like coding power and it can save a lot of the time. So just doing this thing it just shows like gender breakdown of like survival. Okay, age distribution. And there is another nice function called group by. So if you look into P class, so there is like P, in P class there is three general class, like one, two, three. So we want to see like uh, some of the P class. So just data group by P class. So group by means it will group by all those P, one, two, three. So it will group by one, two, three, then passenger ID, some of the passenger ID it shows, some of the survived. So you can see like in passenger class one, 136 people survived, where passenger class two has like 87, and passenger class three has 19, 119, some of the age, and some of those things. So you can change it to some other things, okay? So if you don't want to see the sun, you can see the mean also. So it will give you the mean or you can change it to a standard deviation or something. So these are like basic data exploration tool for Pandas. And Panda has like a this is a huge tool, so it has some other tool you can explore mm -hmm. or if you have any issues with. So this is 
Python funders. Next, we will look into some of the machine learning techniques we use. So for that one, we will use sklearn this notebooks. So SDT time sklearn. So mm -hmm. in this notebook, we will use Boston dataset. Boston dataset is a dataset that has a That has some values for different location of the Boston, house values of different location of the Bostons and some features like how many, what is the crime rate at the location, what is the uh, nitric oxide rate at location, what is the age of this mean age of the that location. So based on those features, they're trying to predict the housing value on that location. So Boston data set has that. And Boston dataset it's inside a scanner package. So load this thing. So we will use NumPy again, Matplotlib and SQLearn. So from SQLearn, it will import the dataset. In the dataset, there's the Boston dataset. And in the machine learning things, like machine learning consists of many steps. And oh, yeah, SQLearn is a package. Didn't you have to import it? So SQLearn is a huge package. Yeah. We don't want to use everything. Right. So here we just want like some of those functions and we are importing like those functions on it. Ah, just that part. So like You could have said import SQLearn and would have imported something like that. It will import everything. So that okay. will take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So this way we can save some time. Okay. And like some machine mm -hmm. resources. And Machine learning has like a lot of steps and we want to check in every step, like every step is running perfectly. So here I use some like print commands. So if all of these things runs successfully, it will print. If something goes wrong, it doesn't print. So this will give you like idea like where your code just broke down. So if all those things runs perfectly, it will show like motion housing data set loaded successfully. Mm -hmm. So run this thing, so see, the print count is here. So, yeah. so when the print count is here, then you know, okay, everything else works. So now we just put the housing data target is the housing prices, and the rest of the data is like features, and we can look into also the feature names. So just run this thing and run this thing here. You can see all the feature names here. So crime rate, zone, industrial area, nitrogen oxide rate, age, I'm not sure what it is, tax rate, uh, people to teacher ratio, some of the statistics and other things. So let's explore this data set a little bit more. So we want to see like how many house prices there, how many features is there, what is the minimum price, what is the maximum price, what is the mean price of the house, median and standard deviation. So this will all this calculate all these things and print. So we can see here, so there is like total 506 house, total number of features 13, minimum house price is five, maximum house price is 15, so there is huge standard deviation and median house price is like 21 and mean is 22. And from median and mean it's like, okay, it's a little bit left skewed data set. So it's not balanced. So next we'll use split data functions. So what is split data? Then test. So in, a, in many machine learning problems, so you have to divide the data set into two sections. There is one test section and there is one training section. So in training section, you will train the machine learning algorithm to how to predict uh, from the features. And the test set, like you will test the, your training algorithm, how good it is. So in R, you can do in any way, but in Scalarn, there is a function called train test split, so we will use that one. 
So from a scale line, we just import frame request this, and we use this function to do the training and test set splitting. And it gives you like four output. So training set, test set, training set, and test set. So in X, we'll take housing features, all the feature data, and the housing price data. And we're saying, OK, we'll split it into four things. Give me the uh, training features and the training levels output, then the testing feature and the testing output. And this is point test size is like 0 0.3. That means like split the train and test like 70% and 30%. And the random state 1.3 is like reproducibility of the result. So if you can see my output is like this. If you use random state 1.3, your output should be like this also. So and this is a very nice feature of the Python. So if you have like a function output is like four things, you can just directly take into the four variables. And here we also use like some of the tool like that can give you like if that this code runs perfectly. So if the code runs perfectly, then it will say like successfully shuffled and split the data. If the code doesn't run successfully, it will say like something went wrong. Mm -hmm. So like in machine learning also, you put all those things in a large script or large function and you want to try to, again, like try to see where it breaks down. So you can see when this, Print function, you see, you know, like okay, break down here, so you don't have to find all this like 800 lines of code to find like where it breaks down. <laughs> okay, so now we split the data and training set and the test set. Next, we try to like okay, we want to develop an algorithm and how can we measure the error. So this is a regression problem because we are trying to calculate the price or predict the price. So in regression problem, we generally use mean and squared error. So we import the mean and squared error function. So what does mean and squared error do? It calculates and returns the total error from the true value and the predicted value. So just a mean and squared error, in, we put it into, into a performance matrix. So this is a Python function. Python function starts with def, then it takes the, what is the input, then and it will calculate the error in error. It take the mean squared error function, then the true value and the predicted value, and return the total error. So we can check it like if this thing work. So we can go on. So this is the like setup for the machine learning algorithm. Now we will learn something, or we will run some machine learning. So for this class, we'll, I'll just run a simple thing called decision tree regression problem. So for this thing, I'm, I'll, I'm going to import some of the machine learning tool from the scalar. So first one is the grid search CV. Then there is make a score function. Then the machine learning tool decision tree regression and the cross validation. And each of these things is very important for them. So let's discuss what each of these things do. And Fit model is a function for the machine learning. So we are importing all these four functions. So regression is does the regression thing, decision tree regression. That's it. And if we look into decision tree regression, sorry, this is the Stellar page for decision tree regression, and it is like criterion is MSC mean standard error, mean squared error. Sorry. And uh, what are the options here or the parameters here? It can take maximum feature. So it's a tree-based method. So how many feature it will hold? Maximum depth. What is the depth of the tree structure? Uh, if there is any sample split or something. Then minimum weight, maximum leaf node, random state, some other things. So here we just like initialize the decision tree regression, we didn't define any of those parameters. In the parameters, we did, I define as something like I define a list, so maximum depth, and we're going to look into maximum depth one to ten. All those things. 
because this is the start of the machine learning, so we want to explore all the opportunities or all the possibilities. And the scoring function. Doesn't start from zero. Yeah, it starts from zero. But if it's zero, how can it grow anything? Okay. So in a scoring function. So we will develop a uh, model using maximum data 1 to 10. And we want to compare between those things. So a scorer function compared between those models. So what we'll do, no. it will take a mean, mean yeah. What is the depth? Can you explain? I, I don't have any idea about the depth. What do you mean by depth as 1 to 10? And the tree? So, let's say, um, how can I say? So, do you have any idea how the tree thing works? So tree is like if you have a central node, then it will be by split. So maximum depth is like what is the depth? So maximum depth one means like it will split once. Maximum depth ten means it will split ten times or something like that. This is like a dendrogram Dendro in clustering. Okay. So it's clustering. Yeah. In a way. It's clustering. So tree is like okay, so just think about uh, house pricing. So so it will first split into like crime rate. If the crime rate is fifty percent, go right. Crime rate is less than fifty percent, go left. So if the crime rate is less than fifty percent, then look into location. If location is like greater than five, go right, go left. So <coughs> those splits. Mm -hmm. So it's not literally clustering, but it's, it's the sequence of it's a, it's got a yeah. tree nature like a dendrogram. It's, it's making decision at every step. So next is a scoring function. So it calculates the mean square error for all of these things, mm -hmm. and then a like a like greater is better is really important. So mm -hmm. if you have like an MEC value good, better is not is always right. MEC value better is not a, makes the function good. So we we'll look into those things. Right? And grid search chimney. So it will make a grid and search all those options. So grid search chimney is the function for like looking into different options. So grid search CV, which function it will look? It will look into regression function, and you're looking for the parameters. CV is the cross-validation. So when you do machine learning, cross-validation is a very important thing, so you cannot overfit. So we define the function here, then regression fit is like model fit. It will train the model right now, and return it. So we do a lot of coding here. We want to also check if this thing runs so well. What does CV equals five? CV means cross validation. So it will five four cross validation. Five four cross validation. So use four and test on one. Yeah. Then use the other different four and test on the other, and do it five times. So typically nominal value of CV is three, mm -hmm. but larger is better. Mm -hmm. But it takes some time. So we write a lot of code here, so we want to also put a check line. So successfully fit a model or successfully not. So let's run this thing. And you can see it shows, okay, successfully fit a model. So all the code is here, right? So now we fit a model. So now we want to check, analyze these models. Like we developed 10 models. We want to check, analyze those models. So here I put two functions here. And if you like Google it, you can find all these functions very easily. So these are like for checking if the model overfits or not. So I'm not going to go through these functions. I just show the result of this function. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions about this function, just email me or you know where I sit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these two functions will analyze the model performance. So first function for leaning learning curve second function called complexity curve. So I didn't write those function, I actually copied from some, someone, so mm -hmm. I put reference for that. So what does the learning curve do? Maximum depth 1 to 10. So we have to check those models. So this is a 
testing error and training error for maximum depth 1, maximum depth 3, maximum depth 6, and maximum depth 10. So what do we see in the maximum depth 10? So we split the data set. So first we include, OK, zero data. So training error and testing error is huge. So if the number of data points, we increase the number of data points, we can see like training error, testing error is like much smaller. So this might not be a good model. But if you look into maximum depth three, it's like the gap between testing error and training error reduced. And if you see maximum depth six, the training and testing error is like, oh sorry, the training error is almost zero, but you can see the testing error is like huge. So it's all, you can say it's an overfitting model. Same goes for maximum depth 10, it's an overfitting model. So from this thing, like maybe maximum depth three is a good fitted model, it's not overfitting. So this testing is called bias versus variance testing. So you're just checking for work. So again, the, the other function called model complexity. So it will do just, it will give you a plot like this. So this is a, how testing error and training error evolves for like different depth of the tree. So when the tree depth is two, you can see the total error and the training error and testing error is huge. You can see it decreased and training error is like pretty much flat after this. So, like suppose it's for eight. After eight, it becomes pretty flat. So there is no reason to you can grow tree length more than eight. So we have also I also print some of those values here. So minimum test error is like sixty. Minimum training error is like zero point one one. So it obviously overfits in the end. Minimum test error occurred at like maximum depth at six. Minimum train error occurred like maximum depth of thirty. So minimum total error, minimum total error is at 17 and minimum total error at, occurred like at maximum depth of 11. So this little information gives you an idea like where you have to choose. So, and SQLR also gives you optimal parameters also. So here you can see like minimum test error occurred at maximum depth of six. So what does SQLR gives? SQLR gives choose maximum depth four. So now decision to you like which one you choose. SQLR give you four, and you can see here like maybe six is better. So this is a, like a now it's machine learning engineers decision like which maximum depth you choose. So now we have developed all these models. So we'll we'll try to predict something. So. I just use a client feature, so it has like 13 features. So if a client has like some of these things, what should be the uh, client's house value? So just run this thing. You can see the like client home value should be 21.63, so which is very close to the median. So this is a very short summary for machine learning things, mm -hmm. but these are the fundamental steps for machine learning. For any machine learning example or any machine learning mm -hmm. project, you have to go through all these basic steps. Some of them are like more complicated than this. So if we have any question. Okay. Thank you, and these are the, some of the reference. You can just look at it. Thanks. Cool. Questions? Any?